So uh, this is uh, ALB scenario one for liberty. Uh, we have completed uh, six turns of an eight turn scenario here. Um, I am going to go ahead and suspend play of this scenario. Um, I wanted to push through to the end, but actually um, I think it is a good stopping point because I don't think the um, I don't think that the Republicans have uh, Republican forces have too much of a chance of succeeding here. Um, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion, but it looks pretty steep now. The the, the road they have to hoe here. Um, they're very strong on this side, um, on the, uh, the east side of the map. So therefore, um, they could certainly d make a dash for the uh, there for the bottom of the map uh, here. They could make a dash from here, um, and they could probably fairly easily fulfill that part of the victory conditions, but. That to win, they would also have to, let me see, um, capture the town and exit at least six steps worth of units off the southern map. So it does have to do both. So while they could probably fairly easily get off the board, this is what I don't think they can do in two turns. I don't think they can take all three of these village hexes here. Um, right there, these three village hexes. I think that the uh, I was just I was going too slow with the Republicans with, with, with the Republican forces. They need to push harder. Um, I was just paying attention to rules mechanics, and I think they've basically fallen behind. Things are starting to go their way. They easily won that that hand-to-hand -hand combat there, but uh, and they also fairly easily <laughs> advanced on the hill here, hilltop here, but um, I just don't think they have the time in two turns to get this whole village and get off the southern edge of the map. So um, well I will play again because there are things there are things that 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 this game is trying to do that I like. Um, I definitely I definitely like the um, the combination of alternating formation activations with the with the uh, reaction um, mechanic. Um, I like that. Um, Graphically, I mean, I've already said how much I like many, if not all, aspects of the graphical presentation. But more importantly, the graphical presentation actually pulled me in to a you know Spanish Civil War setting um, fairly well. I mean, I definitely was always thinking. And experiencing the paper pushing here, um, in terms of you know Spanish Civil War uh, factions here, these anarchist militia units, these regular Republican infantry units, um, yeah, um, has enough thematic uh, uh, overlay. Um, to make it enjoyable in that respect. And once again, I mean, the uniqueness of the topic mixed with the scale is great. Absolutely great. Um, I said definitely needed a, need a whole nother two-sided player aid card because there are all sorts of... There are all sorts of... Uh, lists, you know, officers may do these things, units may do these things. Um, um, so the movement chart is on the player aid and the spotting chart 
is on and the spotting chart is on the the uh, player aid but um, that's a good example but um, but here I don't think the so effect of step losses on fire factors I mean these are a bunch of ranges right if the, if the printed fire factor is one to six and the unit has a step loss, you reduce its fire factor by one. If the fire factor is seven to 11, you reduce by two, 12 to 15, reduce by three. I mean, this is, <clears throat> you're gonna have to play a while before you memorize that, or I will have to play a while before I memorize that. And I don't, I did not see that. I didn't see that on the player aid card no so that's I mean this is what I mean there's clearly a whole nother player aid sheet worth of material in here that uh, that, that could be put on there um, yeah definitely um, um, So that's the player aid card. Um, you do get two of them. That's nice. Um, the real problem, the real stumbling block, the real challenge to enjoying the game comes down to the rule set. And it hit me what I think is the big problem. The big problem is... Um, this style of rules writing, where you have, let me see if I can, so you have 3.3 activation phase and performing actions, then you have 3.3.1 activation, and then you have three, well you really, it looks like three paragraphs, it's actually not even that. I mean I guess these are two paragraphs that are grouped together. There's another paragraph that's separated by spaces. Then you have two more paragraphs that are grouped together. And then you have 3.3.2 performing actions. And you have more text that isn't, to me, it's not clearly or obviously delineated what's what in the rules text. And then you have lists of cases, basically. Officers may, blah, 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 blah. In command units may blah 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 blah. Um, where's where's some place that I that I went back to often? Um, um, well, line of sight. <laughs> Came back to this one way too often. Line of sight section again. 6.2 line of sight, okay. 6.21 line of sight along flat ground, okay. 2.2.2 line of sight along slopes, and that's it, okay. But within these 2.1 and 2.2, there's really block text, and the formatting is just bad. Um, uh, what What is what in here? It's just jumbled blocks. Um, there are some very important, so the overall effect is that important stuff doesn't jump out at you. Uh, there are important rules essentially buried and it's just, it's this uh, very, very, uh, it seems so rough draft. But how can it be so rough draft if these rules were poured over and discussed, I'm assuming a lot, online? Um, so it's not that they were not, it's not that they were not worked over a lot, but they still have a draft. And I'll tell you. In my own writing projects, I think that something can be poured over a lot and can be poured over by a lot of different eyes 
And a lot of different things about a piece of text, especially rules, can be can be discussed, and yet things aren't changed. Things aren't improved. Chain, the right changes aren't made. The text as a whole is not improved. It doesn't matter if that doesn't matter how much does just because something is poured over doesn't mean that it kind of automatically kind of works into a better product. It doesn't. Um, so these are really actually pretty poorly written rules. And these remind me a lot of the lock and load rules that set that I had the same reaction to. Um, so I have no idea for sure the background of how these rules came to be in this second edition. <laughs> second edition AOB. I don't know what the real story but I would not be surprised if this is an example of these rules st stayed essentially in the hands of the designer and so were not able to be improved. I'm just, I can imagine that situation. Because even if I finished a set of rules like this, even though I, as the author, the primary author of the rules, even though I would feel as though every single word is just right and every single punctuation mark is just right, I would still hope, I would hope <laughs> that I would have the maturity to take the thing as a whole and hand it off and let go of it, hand it off to an editor and let that editor, without, without consulting me and without asking me or anything, let, her, let an editor go through and completely reformat it um, for clarity as a as a as a dispassionate user um, that's what I think um, that's what I think may have happened here I think maybe this is happening too often these days perhaps um, I know what I would do to address the issue I think you know, I think anyways um, now that I'm looking at the text again this is um, see, there's all sorts of little, this is, you no. Know, again, I hate to say this seems so common today because it makes it sound like I have some type of extensive historical uh, perspective or vantage point. I don't, but, well, I do play it. I mean, I try, this is a brand new game. I think it's from this year, this edition that I'm playing, and I'm very happy to play a new game. But, I mean, I play a lot of old games. I try. I try to force myself to play as many old games as I play new games. I, I try to force myself to have a wide perspective on the hobby. I try to play old games. And how come older rule sets are so much, seem, seem to be so much easier to, to get? Um, so here, I mean, look at this text. It's like this use of simple dashes, short dashes too. These aren't even N or M dashes. These are like, these are just, these are just dashes. And this is, this is a poor use of this uh, text. Um, you have indentations with these short, short dashes. Um, why? Showing what? And then and then over here you have attack resolution and you have these sub paragraphs, I guess, that are lettered. Why? Is it a procedure? If it's a procedure, why isn't it numbered? Is there a reason why it's lettered? Is it better to have it lettered than numbered? Over here we have, you know, over here we have circular dots. Are circular dots different than the dashes that are all over the place? Over here we have, this is all on the same two pages. Over here we have uh, numbered something, numbered paragraphs. Are they, are they numbered steps? Are they subcases? I don't know. Who knows? What's, who knows what's supposed to be what uh, here, just in rules layout wise. Assault resolution, now, it's, now they're numbered. Now they're numbered, but the numbers are bolded, and there's, you know, like one and a half space between the 
paragraphs. Again, why? Four and five are not bolded. Is that, does that mean something? Special situations, circular dots, why? Who knows? Just the formatting is all over the place. So does it matter? Am I supposed to say, all this formatting is just creative variability and it doesn't mean anything? Well, even, even if that were true, I'd have to say it's incredibly distracting. Um, it's distracting. It does not make it easier to access the information. So why? Oh, you know, these are rules. Supposed to be rules anyways. Um, I do like the... Uh, I do like the examples. Um, color examples are completely unnecessary, but um, but okay. You know, it certainly doesn't detract anything, right? Um, what I want is full text explaining the graphic, which is they essentially succeed here with with that, which is good. Uh, which is good. Um, Um, shifting terminology. Now, again, I'm sure that the I'm sure that the designers were told that terminology seems to change throughout, and I'm sure. Well, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. I assume that the designers stood their ground and explained why hand-to-hand -hand combat is different than assault, which is different than uh, which is different than, um, you know, which is different than anti-armor assault. Um, and I'm sure that they must have explained why, um, you know, why a, uh, why, why rough terrain is different than broken terrain which is different than, um, there, there was one other term used. Um, uh, yeah, rough, broken, and some other term used. So, okay, these had to have been gone over and over and over. All this must have come up. So if you're using such particular terminology, then, lead, then you need to help the reader by having a glossary, which I never saw. Never saw a glossary if these terms are really that important, if the distinctions are really that important. Um, yeah. I already talked about no type of summary of the, um, the, the play markers, and this is relevant because it's right here it mentions um, 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 wait if it wasn't here then where was it uh, Hits on officer. Oh yeah, hits on officers. Reference to wounded officers. Uh, what happened to that? I didn't see it. Is it? What section are wounded officers under? I don't know. I will look. I will continue looking. <laughs> um, allocation of hits. Right here. Right here. Step loss markers. Reference to markers with minus two or minus three. I never saw those. I mean, are they reference to another game? Well, frankly, if it if it's a reference to another game, I'd like to know why this other game has has those and mine doesn't have those. Minus, I just don't see. I just don't see this. They're all minus. I mean. 
Do I have to look through every single one? They're all minus one. All the ones I see are minus one. So, uh, although it hardly matters because the use or the explanation for how you would use these doesn't, markers with minus two or minus three can be used on stacks to show that two or three of the units underneath have lost one step. That doesn't even sound like it makes much sense. But anyways, uh, again, this was not, development of this game was not rushed. This is a second edition by a second company. Yeah, what I'm talking about can't be the result of rushing development or anything like that. Um, oh, never mind the horrible garbled English throughout. Never mind that. Um, yeah. Never mind that. So, it's really primarily just the rules. I, I still think there's a spirit of a game here that, that I mean, I think I'm gonna enjoy playing once I kinda work through all these kinks, I guess. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, despite this, I mean, I'm happy to ha uh, have the game, happy to play it again, uh, look at some other scenarios. Um, um, yeah, it's maybe it, maybe it's, maybe it's plagued with problems that are not particular to this game at all. Maybe it's this game is plagued by some problems that are actually um, fairly wise, widespread in game, game production today. That's pretty, yeah. Um, yeah, so. Alas Barricadas, second edition from Compass Games.